Hi, guys. Thank you very much. It's a pleasure to be here. Um, one question right at the beginning. Who of you knows Linux Fabrik? Oh, quite a few. OK. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Um, nevertheless, let me introduce myself and Linux Fabrik. My name is Markus Frey, and I'm one of the founders of the company. Um, for those of you who have never heard of Linux Fabrik, we are located in Zurich, Switzerland, and we are an IT service provider for Linux and for a wide range of open source applications. Um, um, by the way, we initiated the last Isinger camp two and a half years ago in Zurich. Linux Fabric installs and maintains um, Linux-based infrastructures. What a surprise. Um, and um, sorry. And um, yeah, and support you in doing so, of course, including multi-cloud management. Just have a look at our website for solutions and references to get a first impression. Okay, this. What should be monitored first? Um, from our application portfolio within the monitoring category, the Isinga, InfluxDB, Grafana stack is our favorite for various reasons. But for this presentation, um, for a moment, let's forget about cool monitoring servers, let's forget about uh, web interfaces, fact caches, time series databases, or dashboarding systems. Simply, let's go back to the basics. Let's talk about monitoring plugins, um, what I think are the building blocks of monitoring. First step towards a useful monitoring system starts with basic infrastructure metrics like the ones on this slide. Um, from CPU usage at the top um, to any networking metrics at the bottom. And, uh, and many admins start by installing the Nagios plugins. And who of you did also, who installed Nagios plugins? Yes. And next question, are you using them? OK. OK. So um, if you want to check those basic metrics on your system using Nagios plugins, this is what you get, actually. Um, you can check free disk space using check disk. And network latency maybe with check ping if you have a look at the round trip times. And that's it. Um, but you also get a lot of other creepy 20 year old plugins um, for things like weird wireless stuff or game servers, for example. But basically, for a start, that's it. So, um, we made the same mistake. Um, a few years ago, we also used these plugins to, to monitor our systems with Isinga, plus then a lot of other third-party plugins to get around this limitation. But um, then, yeah, the hell opened its doors. Um, every third-party plugin has a different behavior, is written in different languages. Um, all have their own dependencies, and most of them are zombies without an active community. Um, most of them are too noisy, uh, which I think is a big problem in monitoring. And you will get inconsistent behavior uh, or output over all plugins, and so on, and so on. So, um, from a data service, service provider perspective, there are a lot of really bad checks out there. Yes, thank you. <laughs> oh, yeah. So um, the motivation is clear why I'm standing here. We write and wrote our own checks. And um, as an open source company, the Linux Fabric Monitoring Plugins project is pure open source. We simply needed for ourselves a consistent bunch of platform independent plugins for the admin of a modern infrastructure. And because we are a hoster and a service provider for Linux and open source, and not just a singer, uh, so all the check plugins are used at large scale by ourselves in our own data centers and in those of our customers. By the way, um, who is already using the Linux Fabric monitoring plugins? Dominic? Oh, fine. Thank you. 
Um, good, yeah, okay. Good news for you. Um, yesterday, while we were on the train to Berlin, um, we published the new release of the monitoring plugins at 250 kilometers per hour. So, uh, yeah, yeah, on the train. Deutsche Bahn, perfectly. Yesterday was perfect. Um, so go and have fun with the new release. And here we are today. I, I hope you can get it in the last, uh, in the back of the room. Um, this is what some of our monitoring plugins look like today on any single server. Um, this is just a subset. All of them do not fit on one slide any longer. So, um, but I want to share some insights on our rules and development goals. Um, what we try to achieve and what you can expect if using any of those plugins. First of all, every plugin is, as I said, pure open source. It is even public domain. We dedicated it to the public domain using, using the unlicensed. So in licensing questions, we don't care at all. Do whatever you want to do with it. Um, we think a plugin should be self-configuring and using best practice defaults. So that it runs without any parameters wherever possible. Of course, you can provide parameters, that's uh, clear, but it, most of the plugins run out of the box. And every plugin tries to report as precisely as possible with the most important information first. Plugins are always developed with a minimal Linux in mind, with a minimal enterprise Linux in mind. And if possible, we try to avoid third-party libraries that have to be installed. Imag imagine a storage system, for example, that you normally don't want to touch at all, but you have to monitor it. And as plugins have a limited runtime, all plugins try to execute as fast as possible and use as few system resources as possible. And we have, and there are much more guidelines and rules, but one of the most important is basically return warn. Um, don't panic. Only return crit if an admin wants it to or if an admin has to wake up at night. Crit means, in our case, crit means react immediately. That's pretty important, I think. I would like to go into a little more detail and show some of the plugins in action um, following those rules. Let's start with that simple one. Uh, we already talked about Redis. Here you see the output of Redis status, a plugin that returns information and statistics about a Redis server. Special about this plugin and many of our checks is that they not only provide multi-line information, but also try to give you tips for troubleshooting where possible, as you can see above. Hmm? Who's Sam? I don't know Sam. Um, Sam is an internal um, troubleshooting message from Redis Inside. If you, if you use Redis and you try the memory doctor in Redis, then you will talk to Sam. The next one, the CPU usage check. Um, just to give you an, an impression what it's doing under the hood. Again, we have multi-line output with most important information in the first line. And all the percentage values in the first line are sorted ascending. Then you find null values in the second line and additional info on which processes are greedy are listed below that. This is, I think, very cool. Um, and this check, check alerts only after a certain amount of time. And we're talking about CPU usage. So this is a check normally a candidate for a flapping state every time. This check alerts only after a certain amount of calls. <coughs> Let's say I want to be informed if CPU usage is constantly above 90% in the last five minutes. To provide this, um, a check needs to be stateful and needs to compare current values to values in the past. And those checks, all of those checks that are stateful, use local SQLite databases for this kind of functionality. And um, we have a detail impl um, implemented details like, for example, don't warn me on high, nice CPU usage. 
um, because imagine a backup process running with nice level 19 and consumes 99% of your CPU over hours. You don't want to get informed about that at night. And um, always pretty cool, this plugin behaves the same way on Windows as on Linux. So one other rule is, as we are admins ourselves, <coughs> we implement our experiences um, from daily business into each of those checks. We all need them. Two other checks I would like to talk about in the left corner. The ping check in the right corner, disk I.O. Um, the ping check sends burst pings. Um, that's the difference between or to all other ping checks out there in the wild. So it's very fast. And this check doesn't care about round trip times or packet loss, as long as the host is still reachable in any imaginable way. So that means that 90% packet loss is OK, while 100% packet loss is not. And why? If this check, the ping check, is used to test host liveliness, what in 99% um, um, is its use case, mostly all other service checks depend on its results. And for that reason, this check should be as tolerant and reliable as possible and only raise an alert if the host is definitely not reachable at all. Um, considering disk I.O., in real life, it makes no sense to set disk I.O. thresholds. On a server or storage system, the, the theoretical limits will never be reached. Instead, as an admin, I want to be informed about unusual high usage of that storage system. So this check determines its thresholds itself. Um, imagine like a cache warm-up. And it's starting with a bandwidth of 10 megabytes per second, and then alerts. On details how it, it, it alerts, um, have a look at the readme at GitHub. It's explained there. <laughs> Another check. Here you can see on the left-hand side, um, the disk smart check and G smart control. That's the tool on the right side. Who of you knows G smart control? No one. Okay. <laughs> G smart control is a graphical user interface for smart CTL. And smart CTL itself is a tool for querying and controlling smart data in hard disks and solid state drives. Okay. And um, because G Smart Control is really cool, I love this tool. Uh, it's very mature, and uh, the tool knows what it does. You see here, we imported a, a hard disk that has some failures, and it's reporting about that. Um, our disk smart check is more or less a port of G Smart Control. Um, it behaves pretty much the same, and it also gives you the same messages. So. Uh, pretty much the same way. So another development goal is, if there is good software, and it would be nice to have some of its features in a monitoring environment, we simply integrate the software, or if this is not possible, we port it to one or more Python checks. We don't want to reinvent the wheel. So how do I, um, I'm sitting at an um, empty editor and I want to write a disk smart check. No, we don't want to reinvent the wheel. Is it Nice. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and um, there you see um, new checks from the new release. We did the same porting from a tool to um, Isinga or to our monitoring plugins with MySQL Tuner. So who of you knows MySQL Tuner? Yeah, better. Well, MySQL Tuner is also pretty cool. And um, yeah, we already ported MySQL Tuner about two years ago, but at that time we made a mistake. Um, we um, ported a subset of MySQL Tuner into one big monster check. 
and this was a mistake. Um, the check was always yellow or critical because um, about the bunch of checks it, it did under the hood. And with the new release of the monitoring plugins, all aspects of MySQL Tuner are um, dedicated to those 25 new checks. And why is this cool? This makes monitoring MySQL and MariaDB much more atomic. It's very important and it's pretty much useful when it comes to check intervals or um, alerting, yes, of course, alerting or aggregating results like in the business process module. At the same time, we took the chance to um, port the latest version of MySQL Tuner to those 25 Python checks. And of course, we just ported what made sense of those 7,000 lines of code. So this is the main feature of the new release. And for other new features, have a look at the change log of the project. Um, and we also have checks that check actually nothing, but assist you in your daily business. This is about me. About me is such a check that checks nothing, but provides inventory and security related information. And I have arranged the numerous outputs of uh, this check on one page so that you have an idea of what the check is capable of in the current version. The goal is here to support you in debugging a machine and uh, maybe in relation to other alerts that have popped up in the meanwhile. And the check is even great for getting a quick overview of an unknown machine, for you guys, for example, or it even assists in auditing because you get a user's list, you get uh, the default target, you get cron tabs, system D timers, and so on, what software is installed which ports all the machine listening on, and so on, and so on. About me check. Um, okay, SNMP, Simple Network uh, Management Protocol. When it comes to SNMP, it's um, always a question of our customers, SNMP. We also have a specialized check, which is capable of dealing with object IDs in a programmable way to give you as much flexibility as needed. Uh, but that's not on this slide. And by the way, I hate SNMP, but okay, that's another story. <laughs> um, instead, we heavily recommend using LibreNMS, um, as you see on the screenshot above. Here, LibreNMS is um, showing you a basic list of devices. And who uses LibreNMS? Okay, cool. Yeah, for the other, use LibreNMS for SNMP. Um, and then connect LibreNMS to eSinger um, as a meta monitoring or umbrella monitoring system. Um, using our LibreNMS alert check. This check warns about unacknowledged alerts in LibreNMS and reports the latest, most critical alert for each device. It's the same output here. And you can use the LibreNMS health check, which gets health details of all devices, which will you assist you in debugging. While the LibreNMS version check displays instance information. Checks nothing, but displays instance information for LibreNMS. And there are much, much more check plugins to discover. Um, thanks to Python and some hand-picked libraries, most of the checks work on different platforms, including Windows, which is an OS, I guess. I heard of that before. But um, enough uh, talk about the plugins. Let me also talk about the community. A little history. Um, first, the project was located on our self-hosted GitLab server. We are proud of that server, um, yeah, of course, for two years. The project was well known and used, but there was no community activity at all. Um, in two years, it seemed that nobody wanted to log into our GitLab server, um, and we just had three followers and two external issues and 
zero forks. Okay, and at some point we discovered that someone forked our GitLab repo on GitHub. That was great, um, forking is always great, but Google ranked the GitHub repo much higher than our original one. <laughs> and okay, after experiencing this, the decision was clear, we have to move to GitHub. What we did on the 1st of March. Now, um, after a couple of months, four months, around about four months, we have 60 plus stargazers, 14 forks, pull requests, issues, and so on and so on. So, um, community is growing, constantly growing. And perhaps you notice here the huge increase of stargazers uh, at the red arrow. Um, the reason was our blog post at isinga.com. So, thank you very much. This was pretty cool. And beside the community aspect, our move to GitHub has brought further advantages, like the one shown here. This is a configuration file um, for automatic compiling uh, the check plugins for Windows using Nuitka. It's also a pretty cool feature on GitHub. Uh, most of the plugins have been created on our own. Some of them are customer driven and all of them are used in data centers worldwide. And we are always happy about feedback, issues, pull requests, where also some plugins came from. Thank you, Dominic, one of our main users of the plugins. Um, and if you like the project, consider sponsoring by GitHub sponsors, for example, or by PayPal, or even better, by concluding a service contract and getting professional Linux support. We are also listed on exchangeisinga.com. So if you use the plugins, please rate them, um, help other users, and please spread the word. Would be very great. And this is my last slide. There's much more to talk about, I think, but yeah, time is over. Hey, uh, okay, for questions. And I think lunch is waiting. Um, so thank you for listening. And now it's time for questions or time for lunch. Thank you. Thank you. It's a fantastic job you have done. So bringing the really old plugins to a new level. Thank really, you. Really, really cool community work. Any questions? Uh, what is the minimum enterprise platform I can use the plugins on, like CentOS 7, 6, uh -huh. 5? Yeah. Um, they were developed on RHEL 7 and upwards, but um, try them. Try them on, for example, CentOS 6 or something like that. Try them. So I didn't see a lot of um, performance data. They, do all of them output performance data? 99% of them. OK, great. Uh, yeah. Fantastic. Thank you. Yeah. Fantastic job. Thank you. Yep. Let's buzz off. Bye-bye. <laughs> Ta-da. Um, are there um, command objects in the ITIL for these uh, checks? So we created a single director baskets if you want to import them into a single director. We are just focusing on a single director. Maybe in future they are in the idle in the Isinga packages? Um, it's a question for you. We didn't talk about that. Uh, yeah. No, uh, but we can so talk about that. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Any other question? <laughs> Sorry, no, it did not help a lot. Any other question? OK, I think then there's time during the day to ask any questions if there are some. You, ha you have? No, OK. Um, then again, um, an applause for, for the great work you have done. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.